Hey, welcome to I Flip for Math MathCast, Lesson 7-1, Multiplying Decimal Numbers by 10, 100, and 1,000. Our quote today is by Aristotle, We are what we repeatedly do. Excellence, then, is not an act, but a habit. And Aristotle died over 2,000 years ago, and the things that he said then are still true today. So that's kind of cool. Our learning goal today is to move decimals to easily multiply decimal numbers by 10, 100, and 1,000 because our goal today is to use mental math strategies and not actually multiply the numbers out. There's a painting of Aristotle. Let's see. Here are our individual lesson learning goals. When multiplying decimal numbers by 10, 100, or 1,000, use the pattern of zeros to know how many places to move the decimal to the right. And our second goal is to know that annexing zeros to the right of the decimal does not change the value of the number. Here's our vocabulary for today. It's the word annex, which most of you already know, but I thought we should probably write it in our journals. Remember, annex means to add to, and when we're talking about annexing in math, it generally means annexing zeros, especially at the fifth grade level. So it's adding zeros to numbers. Um, that's a picture of Aristotle's Lyceum, which is school. It's the school that he ran over 2,000 years ago. It's kind of cool that it's still there. Here's an example and some pictures of some things from ancient Greece. 94 and 6 tenths times 1,000. Now here are some hints before we actually do this example. The first thing you're going to do is count how many zeros are in the number 1,000. There are actually three. One, two, three. Then we're going to move the decimal to the right three places because there are three zeros. And if we need to, we're going to annex zeros to fill in the empty place value positions. We wouldn't want to just leave the numbers off altogether. That would change the value of the number. Let's go ahead and do this example. So our first step is to count how many zeros there are in 1,000. So 1, 2, 3. We'll put a little 3 in parentheses. That'll remind us. And then we're going to take this number, 94 and 6 tenths, and move the decimal three places to the right. And I call this leapfrogging because we're actually leaping across numbers. One, then there's an empty place value position two, and another empty place value position three. Now in these empty place value positions, they kind of look like little egg cups. We're gonna put, we're gonna annex two zeros to fill in those spaces. So, and X that out, that's not there anymore. Remember, if I move something, it's not where it was when I started. So if I tell Jake to move from his seat to a new place, then he's no longer sitting in his old seat. He's now just sitting in his new seat. So that's gone, and now the decimal's here. But when we rewrite this number, do we write that decimal at the end? No, we just leave it off because we don't have any digits coming after it, and we wouldn't say 94,600 and. So we're just going to say 94,600. So now we're going to practice multiplying those decimal numbers. And this is kind of exciting that you're already multiplying decimals. That's really a sixth grade GLE, but we're going to get a start on it. Using the strategy that we just used, we're going to multiply 45 hundredths times 100. If you need to rewind and watch the example again, do that. Then do your work, push play, and see how you did. Did you write 45? Let's see how we did that. So step one is to count how many zeros are in 100. One, two, so we'll put a little two over here. That's how many places we're gonna move our decimal to the right. So now as we rewrite our number, 45 hundredths, we're going to leapfrog our decimal two places to the right. One, two. Notice I'm not actually pointing to the numbers. I'm jumping between the numbers. So that's where our decimal would be now. He's not there anymore. So when we re rewrite a number like this, we don't put our decimal at the end. And do we need that zero there anymore? Nope, it has no value as a placeholder. So our answer is 45. Number two, multiply five and seven hundredths by 10. Pause and push play when you're ready. 
Did you write 50 and 7 tenths? Let's see how we did that one. Step one is to count how many zeros are in the number 10. Now, we have zeros on this side of our multiplication symbol too, but we're not counting those. We're only counting the zeros in 10, 100, 1000, or the number that's a multiple of 10 over here on this side. So we have one zero. So let's put that in parentheses. So now, as we read our number, rewrite our number five and seven hundredths, we're going to move our decimal to the right one space. Now our decimal is not there anymore. So our final answer is 50 and 7 tenths. Number three, multiply 867 ten thousandths, remember you may have to sing the place value song to read that one, times 100,000 equals. Pause and push play when you're ready. Put some thought into this one. Did you write 8,670? I know some of you are gonna get me for not putting a comma in that one. I'll owe you a push up. Let's see how we did that one. Really quickly, I wanna sing the decimal place value song just so that you remember how to read that. When you're looking at this, start here at the decimal, verse two. Decimal, tenths, hundreds, thousands, ten thousandths. So remember, we read this like a regular number, 867, and then attach that place value position name, 867 ten thousandths times 100,000. No THS ending on this side. Okay, so let's count our zeros. Step one, one, two, three, four, five. We've got five zeros there. So let's rewrite our number and move our decimal five places to the right. One, two, three, four, five. Hmm, exit out over here. It doesn't belong there anymore. I have one empty place value position that I'm going to annex a zero to fill in there. Now, I don't need to write, rewrite these zeros over here in my final answer because they don't have any value at all anymore now that we've moved the decimal. And here I'll put my comma in. 8,670. When I ask students what worries them the most about math, a lot of times it's word problems. And word problems aren't really any more difficult than the regular computation that we do. We just have to be able to read a word problem and figure out what it's asking us. Don't forget to underline those key words if you're doing it on a written test. Here's our problem for today. Jake and Alani each multiplied 4 and 3 tenths times 10 and 561 thousandths times 100. So those are two separate problems that they worked out. Jake got 43 hundredths and 5 and 61 hundredths as his answer for his products. So he answered both of those problems after he worked them out. Alani got 43 as one of her answers and 56 and 1 tenths. Which student multiplied correctly? How do you know? So we're going to have to try and work out both of those problems in, that are written in the red right now. Then we're going to check Jake's answers and check Alani's answers and see how they did. Write down which student multiplied correctly and give me your proof. Go ahead and push pause, and then push play when you're ready. Don't be afraid of making mistakes. Remember, part of the fun in math is taking risks and playing with numbers. Sometimes we get it right, sometimes we make mistakes, but we just keep trying. Did you write Alani? Let's prove it. I wrote down some information to keep us organized. Organized. Here's the first problem they worked. I labeled it as A, and here's the second problem. Then I went ahead and wrote Jake and Alani's answers down here. You're going to be the teacher and grade them, basically. So let's look at this first problem, 4 and 3 tenths times 10. The actual answer would be, let's go ahead and work it out. There's one zero. We'll put that in parentheses. So here is our original problem, 4 and 3 tenths. We're going to move our decimal one place to the right. It's not here anymore, so our final answer for that one is 43. Now on this one, we're going to move our decimal one, two places to the right. So let's rewrite our number and move it two places to the right. One, 
2. Draw your new decimal in, x out the old decimal. We don't need to write that 0 in our final answer. 56 and 1 tenth. Now let's go down and check Jake and Alani's answers. So Jake put for A 43 hundredths, and so he moved his decimal one place the wrong way. He moved it to the left instead of the right. It's kind of fun to look at kids' answers and see what caused them to make their mistakes. We would want to remind Jake to always move his decimal to the right. Then on B, he put 5 and 61 hundredths. Hmm, this time he moved it one place to the right, but not two places to the right and he had two zeros. So we'll work on the steps with Jake and then he'll get it right next time. Alani got 43, that's the right answer. And 56 and 1 tenths, the same as our correct answer. So Alani is the one who got the answers right in this case. Congratulations, Alani. It's time to challenge yourself. I hope that even if math is hard for you, that you're still trying these problems. Because remember, every little bit of math practice you do makes your math brain stronger. So go ahead and see what you think of this one. We wish this situation would come true. Mr. Randolph wants to buy 100 new iPods for Mrs. Gooding's students so they can watch their iFlip for math lessons at home. Each iPod costs $200, 25 cents. He also wants to buy 10 iPads for his teachers. The iPads cost $525 each. How much money, money will he spend in all? Don't forget to show all of your work. I know you guys can work these problems on calculators, but that takes all the fun out of doing math. So really try to work them out in your flip journal. Come to class tomorrow ready to check your answers. Finishing up. Again, this was fun tonight. It's pretty basic. There are three steps to use mental math to multiply decimal numbers by 10, 100, 1000. But if you still have parts that you're unsure about, make sure that you write those questions down in your flip journal. Also, write down if you're at a one, a two, or a three level in your learning. That helps us to help you when you come back to class. Fabulous, you have completed lesson seven one, multiplying decimal numbers by 10, 100 and 1,000. I can't wait to see you tomorrow.